as people are coming in, um, today is, well, it's the end of Inktober. You know, we have this Inktober celebration, which is a in October, um, it's a celebration of ink, right? And Yasutomo has beautiful sumi inks and Chinese inks. And we're going to just explore mindful mark making using inks. And one thing that I always uh, sort of overlook or forget that Yasutomo has, it's uh, grinding your own ink is a really mindful uh, activity. And it's actually something I'm gonna show you a little bit today. I'm gonna show you um, some mark making, some traditional mark making and non-traditional. I'm gonna go through some of these little pieces of um, these little finished mark making things, and you probably wonder, what on earth? Do, <laughs> what, do you, what on earth does she do with all that? Hi, Kitty in June. It's nice to see everybody. Um, so, what do I do with this? There, I do a lot of things. Not only is mark the mark making a mindful and meditative experience, where you can just do it because you want to calm down, you want to just kind of focus your mind, you just want to kind of escape from the chaos. Um, this is a great, great exercise, a great practice. But you can also do things with the finished marks or the finished pieces. They're not on the they're on their own. They're really not something that you want to um, frame or anything. But there's certainly uses for them, and I'll go over those too. This is something I did about six years ago, and it was really kind of a very intuitive exercise. And I, I've saved it. And what's fun is I, I was able to scan it and make some origami paper out of it. So whatever you do, any marks you make, you can just turn them into something. Um, this is what I just did this morning or this little while ago. I'm going to show you uh, the Torinoko paper, which is our beautiful Japanese paper. It, it's not um, absorbent on the other side. So it has a sizing. And what I like about this is I was able to get some very subtle ink uh, sort of variations in here. Very beautiful shade of gray. And I'm going to show you how I did that. This one I did earlier this week is on 6H paper, which is uh, very absorbent. You can see it's the same pretty much on both sides. And what I did with this one is I just made a circle with a pencil, made a, uh, made circles with the pencil, but you can do it with, um, with a uh, brush as well. And then inside those circles, I made marks. And that was just kind of like a little swatching thing. And it just was a very fun exercise just to kind of keep my, kind of, kind of stay calm and just enjoy playing with the brush, experimenting with what the brush can do. And this is pure straight ink, all black, no water. So that's very, you know, it's very nice high contrast as opposed to this, which is a little more subtle. Um, so this, Oh, I was going to get to these later. Uh, these, I was going to, I'm trying to stick to black and white. This is actually um, done with a brayer. So making marks with a brayer. And I watched a man on YouTube. He's uh, calls himself the spiritual artist. And I love seeing uh, exercises that are talking about, you know, just kind of spirituality or just mindfulness and meditation with art. And these were done with the brayer. So I'm gonna show you a kind of a, uh, an idea with the brayer and ink. And this is just a very loose, intuitive, dripping, pouring of ink, and then mindfully mark making with a white, with white ink or a pen over that. So you can see how you could just go on these monochromatic things. And I'm gonna skip that blue one, take that out <laughs> for today. Um, this one is also using just a, a, a wedge brush. And I just kind of moved around and then made some marks on top. So you can layer with your marks. And this uh, I wanted to share with you was that that original one that I had done. This is the original with the black ink. And then I used some Chinese ink on top. So it's got this nice warm tone to it. And this is I used I put it through my printer. My um, This is the Asagami, which I love. It's got this nice crisp feel to it. It is wonderful for uh, um, laser or inkjet printing. And I love the way it takes light shades of ink. It's, so you'll see me do that in a little bit. And I'm hoping if you have some ink today, you will get your inks out and let's play. And let's, let's get mindful. Now this is 6H. Now I've never printed on 6H paper. Um, I just cut it the eight to eight and a half by 11. 
and or just you know and I stuck it in my uh, laser and I didn't I couldn't believe it I'm able to make uh, a print paper print in my with my 6h paper print on the smooth side both um, if you're doing this with gel printing or with you know inkjet or laser uh, definitely print on the smooth side and it took it very well so I was really excited about it um, here's another little piece I did a little while ago and if you remember a few weeks ago I did something with blues remember the watercolor I just indigo it was indigo ink <laughs> excuse me but today I thought no, I'm going to use the monochrome you know the black and I used shades of gray and, and it was a really peaceful and very meditative experience. And now I really like this paper. I can't wait to turn it into something, maybe some origami paper, I'm hoping. But it's just, to, you know, the whole thing is just to get into a zone um, and enjoy. And this one here is just circles that I made. And I'm going to go over this little exercise because it's a really very fun one. I call this bubbles. And um, after I did the circles, then I used the Chinese this ink is the silver. This is the gold. I'm going to show you those today. It's uh, These are great, especially on the absorbent papers, like on the 6H. It's really nice. But this is just another little, you know, mindful mark making practice. And then this I wanted to show you last because I thought I would try playing with the mineral paper a little bit. So Melinda's here. Hi, Melinda. Oh, that's so great. Kitty, I think I said hi. Hello. So glad you're here. And yes, Kitty, you're talking about books. I'll talk to you about that in a second because, but first of all, here's my little mineral paper experiment and I loved it because I got it really wet and, and it never wrinkled, of course, but it made these really interesting textures on the paper, just using a brayer. So that is another th option. So if you wanna mindfully make marks on mineral paper, you can do it on that, do it on rice paper, washi paper, even typing paper, you know, stuff out of your printer. Printer paper is fine too. And I'll tell you, so like I mentioned, what do you do with it? This is the book I'm talking about. When you, men when you mentioned Kitty, yes, um, I use a lot of my, my uh, mindfully marked papers for pieces like this. Um, this is a, little, a thing I did in fodder school. It's my fodder school two project. Um, this is actually my, it's called a blizzard book. And everything here has been marked in one way. I use that mindful mark making and a lot of very monochromatic. This is very, uh, lots of, there's lots of uh, black and dramatic, um, very neutral tones here. So these are all just um, kind of collage papers and bits and pieces of papers that I made. But so, you, you know, if you get a mass, a collection of papers like this, you've got, you've got a, a stash of collage papers that you can work on and do make something like that or whatever you like to do. You can do collage and anything. So to set up, <laughs> here we go. Oh, I had to show you. I think I showed you, I might not have, but this is a, a little box, which I think is gonna be great for Halloween. Put a couple of candies in it. Um, this is just basically the printout of the little one I made six years ago. And I really like the way it came out. So I might even be able to show you how I folded that today. I'm hoping I have time and um, so these are the three papers that I'm going to work on. 6H, if you have that, bring it out and enjoy. So I'm going to grab a couple, a sheet of that. And this one is absorbent paper. And it's you know, pretty heavy weight. You know, it's fairly heavy. But you can still see through it a little bit. You can see the word uh, asagami underneath. So you know there's a little translucency to it. But it's, you know, it's very sturdy. It's got a smooth side and a rough side. And anybody who's been here before, um, so June, you mentioned the Blizzard book. Yeah, um, it's actually in the book by Hetty Kyle called Art of the Fold. It's, um, Hetty Kyle is my hero book artist, H-E-D-I-K-Y-L-E. If you look up her name, Google her name and Google the Art of the Fold, you're going to find not only the Blizzard book, but other structures that are genius, uh, folded structures, you're going to flip out. <laughs> so if you like folding books or making books, go go to that. Um, I also taught at Potter School too. I did a, a Blizzard book um, lesson for the month of June of this of this year. So you know, if you're a Potter School student, you can you can access the lessons there. Um, but that's pretty much how or you could probably maybe Google it. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, hope that helped. Okay, so got this paper and then Asagami. 
I love this paper. It's not only good for painting, it's good for, like I mentioned, uh, printing. Now these pa papers are not, uh, they're nine and a half by 10 and three quarter. So I cut to, to print, put them in my printer, I just do the eight and a half by 11 or the eight and a half piece here. And uh, I'm good to go. And another one I really love working on, and today is going to be great on this one, is the Torinoco. This one is a little heavier than the Asagami. It's a little more opaque. Let's see, I'm going to put the, you can see through. You can see, I can see through this one a little bit more than this one, but it's not that much difference. But they're both really strong, and they're both, um, they both uh, kind of let the ink float on top. And this one will let the the ink sink down, which is why I like using it with the metallics. But those are the papers I want to use. And let me just show you a little bit of ink grinding because I haven't shown you. And all these times I've got ink out, and I haven't shown you how to do it. So, and when I put it, I'm going to actually create a little bit of ink. And this is part of the mindfulness. If you're working with um, sumi inks or any kind of ink, you will. I'm just gonna put a little, just a little water right there. And I, oh, I have to tell you about this. This is a, it's nothing fancy. It's something, if you go, when you get the grocery store and you buy those water flavoring drop things, that's what this is. It's, I took the label off and of course I use the stuff and I don't remember the brand, but you can, it, it holds water and I can travel with it. And it's just perfect for dispensing water into your uh, ink dishes. So a free thing that works. You know, you have to buy the stuff first, but <laughs> and if you have Anshu really paper alka, yes, that yes. will work. It's a very thin, but I think it'll make great marks. It's very thin. Put something underneath it, alka, like a pad, because it's going to soak through everything. Um, but it will be fine. Use it. It's going to be great. So I'm just going to take my little ink stick and I'm going to show you that it comes as a solid stick. And you can see I've already been, ink, you know, doing it on this side. And um, you just start to grind your ink, and it actually has a, you can hear, I might be doing it wrong. I probably am doing it wrong. Either way, <laughs> you cut the water, and you want to just put the uh, stick into the water, and I might have put too much water, but, and you grind it, and you're going to feel in this ink stone, in the Sazuri stone, you're going to feel the grinding of this ink. It, it feels you can feel it. It's really interesting. It feels interesting. Now, what I could do is I could make some marks with my ink stick. I didn't think about that. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this because I just thought about this. Is if I take like this and I can make and I'm just checking to see. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna make some marks with my ink stick. So while I'm grinding, this is probably not. This is not the traditional way to grind ink if you're doing a semi painting. But I'm gonna do it my way, I guess. But this is making ink and I'm also making marks at the same time and by this the way, little... Karen, yes oh by the way um Kitty was asking how does the Gasan paper compare to the Hosho paper uh the Hosho and the okay something's wrong with my camera here let me just fix it oh no no um the Gasan is um the the actually there as far as the difference with Yasutama papers are you thinking of the 6h is that kind of the is that I, the I one think... you're asking yeah, I think she's asking about the 6H, yeah. Yeah, the so the 6H is a very bright white, first of all, I mean, just like bright white um, compared to the host to the Gossen. Gossen has a little creamier texture. Gossen has a higher quality, it's higher quality. Um, I'm not sure if the, fi I think that the fibers are a little longer and I believe it's more fluffy. If that's the word, that's, there's a word that's we call fluffy. It's got a it's got a fluffiness. It's a little thicker or fluffier, if that makes sense, <laughs> Kitty. <laughs> but um, you can try when you try making a brush stroke on Gossen, you'll notice and compare it to the six H. You're gonna you're gonna notice a difference in the way the paper is uh, or the ink goes into the paper. So you can see in my uh, doing this, making little mindful marks at the same time that I'm grinding my ink. And um, I'm going to show you how much I've ground. I'm only just going to do like a gray tone. Um, it's got a nice, nice light gray. So I could keep grinding and get darker and darker and then just make a darker, um, make a, a darker tone all the way to black, the longer I grind. So that, and I also wanted to mention, if you are, um, if you want to experience 
aromatherapy. It's this is actually has a can like a camphor smell or a pine smell, and they purposefully the ink manufacturers purposefully add that to give you a sense to calm you basically. So if you you'll notice it has a, a nice scent coming from the dish, and that's part of the experience. So that's why sometimes in grinding ink, and if you're you know in a quiet room or have some nice music, it's really calming. So I just want to let you know that. And now this is important before you store your ink stick, just wipe it completely dry like that till you don't see any uh, wetness at all. And then store it back in the box. And you are, you can, this, these last forever. They don't ever go bad. In fact, the longer they, you have them, the better they are. And I think Kitty bought one from, you mentioned you bought one from like from 30 years ago or so. And, and they're amazing. The, the inks are never go bad. So so try to grind your ink sometime. It's really fun. And so this is a little darker, I can see. And I'm just going to pour it into my dish. And you can see I've kind of made quite a bit, actually. And then you just need to rinse these out, these stones, with water when you're ready. But that's making ink. And I just wanted to go over that very briefly <laughs> with you. OK, so let's make some marks. So we've got this little first little mark um, made. And now I wanted to just talk about my little circle marks. And I could do it on the new, I'm going to do it on the Orinoco. And this one, I'm hoping that you can see within, I'm going to move that to a little bit to the side. So you can, I've got it centered on my, my thing so you can see it. There we go, like that. And I'm going to take a brush of my choice. Now, whatever brush you have is fine. I'm going to use a pointed brush. Um, today, I'm going to just take Oh, what the heck? Let's see. I'm going to use, I've got so many brushes to choose from. <laughs> I'm going to use this one. This is the All Purpose Brush 2.0 or 2.0. Oh, there's also, I've got an SW1. I think I'll try the SW1. It's a little thicker or it's a little bit bigger. And that's what I was using earlier today. Have plenty of water. Have your, get yourself um, where you're, you have elbow room. And you're you're sitting up straight. You're sitting with your feet firmly planted on the floor. You 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 want your back to be as straight as possible, and you can just take a couple of deep breaths, and then let's just let the ink flow. One thing I will do is put some black, solid black, pure black. Oops, if I can get it open. <laughs> I'm gonna put some black ink and just maybe right in the center of my dish here. Just so I have some different variations of black and gray. Okay, so that's in the center of my flower dish. There it is. So I've got, I may make a lighter version. Let's just put some water in here and just, I can make a real pale, really washed pale gray, maybe by just combining these a little bit. Okay, so this is the Torinoco and it's going to act differently than the 6H, which is the whole show that is soaks in. So what I'm going to do is a circle. I'm going to call this the bubbles. And we can go the whole page. You can do half page or whatever you want. But I'm going to start with my, my first ink that I had done. And I'm just going to start by making little circles. And they don't have to be perfectly cylindrical. They can be wonky. And I'm just holding my brush straight up. And I'm just going to kind of make my first circle. And I'm going to connect one end to the other. So however it goes there. So you want to connect those and see how it's floating on top. I love that. If I want to drop a little pure black in there, just kind of like to make it really dramatic while, the, while it's still wet, I'm creating a kind of a interesting texture there. So that's my first one. Now the next circle I'm going to make is going to touch the circle, but it's not going to overlap. So I'm just going to kind of make it and I could make it any size, but it's touching. And it doesn't have to be the same size. It's touching only. And I'm going to put a little bit of the black just to see it, just drop it in, just to watch it dance, have, move, have it move on the page. You can do this. This is one that you can do. This kind of has more of a watercolor feel to it. I'm going to take my a third circle, and I'm going to connect. I'm not overlapping them, but I'm going to start right here. And I'm just going to connect. Basically, they're touching each other, but they're not overlapping. So the sound like bubbles. And I'm going to leave that one just that way. And really, you want to just go through this the whole page. And I'm just kind of using 
my wrist, my shoulders actually are the pivoting. I'm pivoting with my shoulders. I'm not trying to, um, you know, use my wrist. I'm really trying to just use my shoulders. So holding it straight up and kind of wonky. There we go. Connect them and kind of just fill the page and just add black if you want. Let drop in some, you know, pure black just to see what kind of textures you can create. So I've got my little gray colors and I'm just going to slowly and then breathing in between is good. I'm talking and it's not really, <laughs> so if you're here, if you're home, if you're in a place and you just want to do this, just take some breath, take some breaths and then drop that ink into the wet ink and watch it move. And that's another way to focus on the now, on the very moment that you're in. We're just making these beautiful little circles. Now this here, I'm going to start my circle. I'm just going to connect them, but not overlap. And then there. So I get this connection. And I'm thinking of how connected as humans we all are, right? So I'm always, I'm just thinking, yes, we all, these little circles could represent each of us, but then we are connected. So in a big, small, different colors, we are all connected. And this is the beauty of doing mindful art. You can put it, whatever you want into it. You can visualize whatever you want. Um, you could make this, you know, if you're someone struggling with maybe, you know, like I have a friend who's just two friends actually, who are battling cancer. And right now I'm gonna visualize, these are the cells that are gonna help. These are the good healthy cells, you know? So these are things you can do, visualize health, visualize anything you want. Um, I love it. I'm loving this already, just like as it's filling the page. And you can go as far or as, you know, as little as you want. You can stop when it feels right. And this one, I'm just going to drop a couple of little black spots in there just to see it move on the page. So that's my circle exercise. And it's really very, it's really fun on this paper. I mean, you can go faster, but but then you want those uh, ends to connect and basically, or touch and just do the whole, fill the whole page and fill it with the different lights and darks. And here, I'm going to do a real big one. Just going to go like this and connect that wonkiness. Yes, I love that. <laughs> but I made sure that those touched. And that's kind of a, keeps you focused. It's like my hand, my eyes, and my thoughts are on this on these creating these circles. I want to do this one here where I'm connecting all the circles right there. So can, you can fill your page that way. Continue until you are done, until you're happy with it. So that I'll just stop that one for now, but that's kind of this one here. That's one idea. And then you'll notice it doesn't soak through on the other side. Of course, this is very addictive. I want to do more. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I want to make light areas. So there's lots of light and um, kind of contrast between light and dark. Maybe do some darker ones too. This one I'm not connecting. I'm going to connect two like this. So just these are just let them do let them uh, do their thing. Now this is going to look different on the Asagami. This will look much different on Asagami than it does on the Torinoko. So interesting how all the papers have their own special properties. So that's why it's nice to have all of them, depending on what experience you're looking for. Or if you're just trying to just paint, you know, if you're trying to paint flowers or anything, you can, you just have to have the different papers. It's kind of like with watercolor paper, you need your hot press, you need your cold press, and you need your rough for different types of um, textures and experiences. I am painting on the smooth side of this one and I'm gonna finish that one off right there, no more. That's it on that one. <laughs> so that's one idea. And I'm, once it dries, it's gonna look even more interesting. Now another mark making uh, technique that is fun is to just do what we did last, well, I think it was with the, um, 
It was with the indigo inks. And I'm going to take the same brush and I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to make mountain. This is like mountains. I'm thinking of the mountains. And I'm going to take a deep breath and I'm just going to go and I'm going to, I'm just rotating my brush and kind of just making this mountain scene. I'm going to take the medium ink and I'm just going to drag it and do the same thing. Just kind of vary your line by just rotating the brush and moving it across the page. You can even go the opposite direction. Just load your brush and then go in the opposite direction. And you crisscross, you'll see some interesting things because this ink is, uh, it's, it's not soaking through the paper. So I'm getting these really interesting bleeds, which I really like. So I'm just gonna keep doing this. And this one, you can go faster, make it more energetic. You can lay the brush down on its side to create more, now, uh, Barbara, that's a good question. So the list of to the, what do you do? Uh, Phoebe, do we have a list of like a little list of all of our papers and what they do and what properties are? If We should put one together if we don't. <laughs> yeah, so I think right now, the um, way that you can currently check is by going onto our online, like our website, our shop.yasutomo.com and see the information for each paper. Um, on the product listing page it's broken down by like you know the gsm the sizing the the size the sheet count um but yes i, I am working on a little overview that compares all of the papers but i don't have that yet so we are putting something together stay tuned for that because that would be very helpful so it yeah, would be and really the the knowing the gsm and the you know sizing all that is really you know that's good to know but also i think maybe we can do a little more experiential comparison as well. Like maybe, you know, kind of as we work, as we kind of record our experiences with the paper, um, we can uh, maybe kind of in words, try to try to kind of express what we're experiencing. Like something about the, um, there's some nuances, you know, uh, that we can't really describe in the sheet count or the sheet weight or the sizing. So, so let, we'll work on that. Let's do a really try to get one that's really very helpful to for all of us to remember. Maybe maybe with some photographs or something of each paper and how how one stroke works on it with different papers. So you can see what's happening here. I've got some little neat blends happening because I'm combining going very light, like really light, super light ink, and I'm kind of crossing over where the dark ink is, and it kind of picks up the dark ink the dark ink that's not um, dry yet. And it's really fun. So I, you know, I can do this, this sort of looks to me like neurons, almost not mountains anymore, but I'm just enjoying this activity of going back and forth and my um, arm is on its shoulder. It's just making these lines and I can just keep going until I feel it the way I want to. Now I could rotate the paper, which I think it'd be fun is if I rotate it and do the same activity, this is another thing you can do, just rotate it for, you know, 45 degrees and just do the same uh, activity and you'll get just a totally different feel to it. So I'm just going to go across and see what I can, see what happens. <laughs> it's the first time I've done the rotation. So I think That's it might be cool. fun. Is that gonna, fun? Um call out Lily's question real quick too because other people might be wondering Lily asked if it's possible for Yasutomo to incorporate all papers into one package so that you can make your own comparisons we love this idea and um, we don't have anything like that available yet but we have been talking about that internally about having a paper sampler available um, excellent idea Lily and it's something that we're going to work on trying to get for you so stay tuned for that as well I love the idea of a paper sampler. A lot of, you know, it's a good thing. I think we could, you know, it'd be very, we could just have it as a, you know, minimum, just have it as a little package, a little, instead of the one single paper in one pack, we can maybe just have the assortment in one pack. That would be kind of nice. So this is now looking to me very kind of like, I'm thinking of neurons, thinking of, the nervous system, and I'm thinking of calming my nervous system. So I'm just imagining my little nerves calm, and they are today because I've been doing this <laughs> all day today. So, well, not all day, but for the past hour before I 
this open, I thought, you know, I better kind of get into the mood and oh my gosh, what a difference it's making for my, I mean, I almost want to take a nap. That's, that's how good it is. It's pretty good. It's like a Friday night happy hour without having to, the hangover, right? <laughs> you can do it. So I'm just crisscrossing. You can see, I don't know if you see my wrist. It's basically, I'm just flowing back and forth, kind of like waves, you know, like I'm just dragging my brush back and forth. And I'll do that until I feel I've got enough ink on there. And I'm going to let that, I think I do have enough ink. I'm just going to let that be. And I love that. It's not soaking through either. This is the Asagami. And I want to show you what happened here with the, the um, it's not all dry, but you can see the nuances of the color, the dark and the, the light on that. And it's just really pretty. This is with the Torinoko. I love that. Now there's another little thing I wanted to share. Well, not a little, but I'm gonna try it on the 6H. But I mean, I think I mentioned the spiritual artist. He had the he was using a brayer. No, I've never used an ink, um, or sumi ink with a brayer. But this would be a first. But I thought I'd try it. Why not? I love doing these lives with you because I can try new things. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Okay. Now I've left, I'm leaving splots. Oh, this is interesting. Here's another, whatever I have, my little inks, I'm making splotches, which is kind of cool. Like little, little prints of my ink marks underneath the 6H. So if you're concerned about it, just change your paper out and or change the pad. Um, one thing I should do is while I'm using ink in a brayer, I should, I can try this. I haven't done this. This is new, but I'm going to try it because it's, I don't have my other thing with me, but I'm going to put a little bit of ink in here, just a little, I'm not gonna overdo it. This is the KF series and it's nice. And uh, I'm gonna just take my little brayer, I'm gonna try this and I'm gonna make marks with my brayer. Why not, right? I'm just gonna do it. This is 6H, so it's gonna soak right in. Oh my gosh, I love the texture that it's making, oh yeah. So you can make marks with your brayer and they're the same thing it's mindful because i'm just making a pattern i'm not trying to make a picture i'm just making a pattern and i'm kind of repeating that pattern and i go this direction and this goes quite a long way and you'll you'll notice after i'm finished with this i'm going to um i'm going to have some it's going to go soak through the other side so i'm going to make myself this fun little pattern paper and then what i'll do is probably go some with some light maybe some silver or gold, because I am using 6H, and uh, I'll probably do some marks over that. But there it is. I was able to make a really interesting texture with these the brayer. And so there, so if you have a brayer, why not try? <laughs> By the way, Karen, um, I know that sometimes you just have stuff around, but Barbara asked if you could show the pad of paper or show the oh, sure I can. pad okay, of the so, pack before you use it so that yeah. um, everyone can get the name, because I know you yes. say it, but visually yeah awesome this is it so this is 6h this is what i just did i am i'm using 6h for this brayer technique and it's um 6h is really my go my it's great for everything so that's 48 sheets 9 by 12 6h you gotta have that in your stash i always tell people you gotta have that <laughs> and then we're gonna set this aside and let it dry that's the thing about it. we gotta be it's like being patient to let things dry it soaked through, but not as much as I thought it would. So the ink kind of floated. I see a little floating here, which I might just, there, kind of spread it out so it dries a little quicker. I, wow, how fun. Using the inkstone now as a brayering tool. I never would have thought. So this is 6H. And then the one that I did before, this is the, uh, um, this is the Asagami. So I'm going to show you that pack. This is the floating paper, the one that floats a little bit. And that is this paper. This is Asagami. It is called, it is 10, nine and a half by 10 and three quarters, 20 sheets. And the item number is 6AG. This is a paper that has that nice crisp feel that you can, um, you can print in, in your inkjet and your laser printer, black and white or color, whatever you want. We love it for that. And then the other paper, I can get it somewhere in my pile. I'm gonna have to bring it. There it is. 
I don't know what I did with it. It's somewhere. The other one is Tori Noko. There it is. <laughs> this one is the one that I did. Now, this is the Asagami. I'm sorry. This is the Asagami. This is Torinoko, sorry. So they're similar, but one is heavier. Um, Torinoko, this is what I did Torinoko on. Uh, the circles on was this one. Torinoko, it's six T is the item number. And it's tw it's 20 sheets. You get in a pack, loose sheets. So that's kind of nice. Nine and a half by 10 and three quarters. So to put it through a printer, I just cut it down. But that's with me. That's made with the Torinoko. And then this is the Asagami, the one I just finished or which I really like. I'm liking it as it's dry and I see some really dark areas and see how the light areas are so much lighter now. And I really like that. Um, asagami and it's made out of hemp, just so you know, it's a hemp paper and it's six AG is the item number. And it says um, the Asagami is actually neutral size for used for legal documents, copy paper, watercolor and gonzai painting. So you know, it's really fantastic stuff. And I love this. I'm gonna, I can't wait to do something with that. Okay, so I'm hoping that helps. And I'll keep trying to bring up and mention which papers I'm using each time. So a sil silicone spatula. Oh yes, do it. Now, when you're doing it, Jane, I'm, I just read your comment. When you're doing it with a silicone spatula, um, be, remember that this is a little bit more delicate paper than, let's say, you know, a little heavier papers. Just for sure, do it on your smooth side so the silicone kind of glides across the paper. And then that should hopefully keep it from tearing. So that's just my, my little, um, whoops, a little suggestion there. Now, this one is sort of screaming for some uh, gold or silver, I think. And I'm not sure which. I think I'm going to do, yeah, why not gold? We'll do it. Now this is, these two um, inks are Chinese inks and they're really not metallic. They're black inks with um, with gold or silver in between, or not in between, mica. They're not, but they, are, they come out looking black. So I'm gonna start with the gold. And when you do these, you must shake them until you hear the little ball. I think you hear it. Sometimes if it's been sitting on the shelf for a while, if it's been sitting on the shelf, it's not, you're not gonna hear that ball. So keep shaking and shaking. And sometimes you might have to shake a lot and you're getting your, <laughs> a lot of exercise, but you've got to shake it and then shake it for even longer to really mix up the pigment because if they've been sitting on the shelf, that beautiful gold and the beautiful silver is just going to be sunk to the bottom and you won't be able to use, it won't look what you're, it's not what you're looking for. So I'm going to use the gold and I'm going to turn this around. I'm going to got little two places for my gold and silver here. And I'm going to pour it in. And when you notice when I pour it, which I love these little spouts, by the way. This is a CG18, just so you know, CG18, which is basically 180 mil uh, Chinese ink gold. That's basically how we, so clever. I'm putting it in and I've got, it looks black, right? It doesn't look gold at all. It's very black. I'm gonna put that cover back on. I'm gonna also take my silver out, so you've got it. CS18, C. Chinese ink, silver, 880 mil, <laughs> CS18. And I love these little spouts. Now, you know, I don't drip a lot of ink all, all over the place, which is good. And now I've got those. All right, so I'm gonna do some marks. I think I wanna do some bold circles, kind of like kind of what I did before. And I'm gonna clean my brush out. And when you're cleaning out your brush, just always kind of dab it with on some, you know, on a napkin or something, just to get all your extra ink out. And I'm gonna take, forget which is, well, this is the gold. And I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna load the brush and I'm just gonna make kind of like a circle, connected circle. And kind of make some circles kind of going on top. And I wanted to see how, it, if, it, if it's opaque and it goes over the black and it does, totally covers that. And I'm just gonna make like a pattern, just kind of a random circle-y shapes, nothing. And this is interesting. Look at that mountain. I don't know if you see that, but there's like a little mountain there. <laughs> it's kind of like a, I love these from that brayer. I see like a little landscapes in all of these. That's really fun. So I'm not going to cover up my little landscapes. I want to show those off. They all look like little landscapes. Pretty amazing. So that is how you can enjoy using the gold and the silver because um, I'll show you the gold, the silver next. So I'm just clean that out. 
and then I'll do some in silver. So you have a mixed metal looking thing. There we go. And it's just really pretty. This one doesn't have, I'm just gonna make the circle. <laughs> really not trying to go, I don't really want to do it in a necessarily in a total pattern, but maybe maybe one over here kind of going off the page. Oops, that was gold. <laughs> Kind of mixed uh, the two of them up there and the silver i'll just do a little partial circle over there but so so there you go and you, then if you want to make little dots you can make little you know you can make dots and then what i love about the dots is they will start out black but then the the black will soak will fall to the bottom of the paper or through and the the silver will, will sort of show and i'll show you a close-up in a sec I'm just gonna go and make blot little drips and drops. Nothing, you know, I'm not trying to, just marks. Just wanna see what this ink does on the paper. And this is where I kind of go into layering. Oops, I just did ink, black ink. I, didn't, I dipped it in the wrong color. There we go. So I'm just gonna go, just kind of drop my brush down and see how it floats up. You can make such pretty papers. They're like unique papers that only you, that you've made, nobody else, you know, can't buy them commercially. They're made with the quality, you know, the paper itself is good quality, can be used for book arts, collage, uh, origami, you know, all kinds of good stuff. Card making, really possibilities are endless. Um, and I love this com combination of the gold and the silver kind of popping through with a little bit of the magic. I just love this, these um, little landscapes that happened here. I'll see if I can get this to, looks like once you put the silver or if you put it over a uh, dried black, that silver, it, it doesn't soak through the paper. Maybe I'll just put a silver spot there. So that is that one. I can't wait to see that one dry. Isn't that one pretty? Love that one. Okay, so that's using the gold and silver. Now we've got um, a few moments and I wanna go over, if you have any questions. Um, oh, wait, let me see. Oh, so um, if your gold doesn't come through, do I need to shake it more? Yes, you couldn't. So what you wanna do, I'll go see if your gold comes, yeah, if it's not coming through, that means the pigment's still not, um, it's, it's not mixed up yet. So hopefully keep shaking and then try it, test it on a piece of absorbent paper, or even you can test it on your, on your paper towel. You'll be able to tell. You can see if there's the pigment is in there, but it's mostly black with a little bit of pigment, um, silver or, or gold. And it's a very subtle look. If you're doing it on, let's say copy paper, you won't see, it's not working on the, that, but um, if it's on copy paper or, or just regular paper, it's just not gonna show much. It's very subtle, but it's still pretty. It'll show kind of a warm sort of sheen. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the different things. Oh, one more thing I wanna show, mineral paper. Now, if you haven't tried mineral paper, I'm gonna bring out the pad. Here's the pad. This is the mineral paper. This is uh, JMP 400G. This is what the pad looks like. It's a nice thick piece. It's a 160 pounds, so it's really nice and heavy. But if you only have light mineral paper, the you know the thinner stuff, the same thing. It works. It doesn't wrinkle no matter how wet you get it. Um, this is just nice because it's a heavier weight. But you don't have to have that at all. You can have any just mineral paper if you have it, or even if you have something like some UPO or some. I'm trying to think of what else would work. Um, some non-wrinkling paper. I don't know what else there is out there. <laughs> but this is my mineral paper. And Denise is here. Hi, Denise. Okay, cool. Well, my Some friends are here. So glad that you're here. Okay. Everybody that came, I'm happy you're here. So let's see. I'm going to take this little brayer thing. I want to see what I can get out of that because that was fun. Uh, I'm going to use this, put a little bit of more ink in my little dish. So now I have another use for my scissory stone other than grinding ink. Makes a nice little container for brayering. Kind of cool. It's like a little well, you know, you can get down in there and use it, get down there and do it. It's really cool. 
Plus, I'm not throwing another piece of plastic in the, in the trash. <laughs> so, all right, here we go. I'm going to do something bold. I'm going to just take this and go across. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like that. And I'm going to go this way. And then I'm going to take it and just see how much. Oh, yeah. The textures are beautiful. I'm going to turn it. Oh, yeah. This is fun. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm having fun now. Um, I'm going to actually turn this so that. I have a, a foam. This is not a foam. It's made of felt, so it's got a nice cushion to it. And this might be a nice way to just sort of in the future doing mark making is having a cushion, even if you're not using washi paper. You can still have a cushion. So I'm going to take this again. <laughs> and I'm going to just drive it across. Oh, this is so satisfying. <laughs> I'm going to turn it again. I'm going to turn it and do another. And I'm loading it, let, I've got less ink in here. So I'm just kind of don't have, as, it's not as concentrated. And I really love that. I'm going to go off the page. Oh yeah. And I'm going to turn it again and go off. There we go. Wow. This is fun. <laughs> so now I can do the, make little short. I want to make little short things. You know, I can make little marks like this, but whatever you want to do. I mean, just try make using a brayer. It's just kind of fun. And you can also use a brush if you're using on the mineral paper. You can use, I'm just going to use what's left in my ink stash here. And I'm going to just kind of, maybe the lighter, see what happens if I use the lighter tone or some silver or just mix it all up. And I'm just going to kind of go make, I'm just meandering around. And I'm noticing that the mineral paper, it hasn't dried on the mineral paper. So my brush, is actually picking up the mineral, the ink on the mineral paper. I'm just gonna man, meander and just make marks. And this is something anyone can do. You can do this. Um, it's we're not throwing pictures necessarily. We're just kind of enjoying this moment. I'm just kind of going going in little loop de loops here. Like I'm driving on a, I'm traveling on a road and I have nowhere, no way of knowing where I'm going. I'm just enjoying the, the journey. <laughs> kind of how that feels. It just feels really nice. And I'm not really, I don't know, I'm just kind of feeling the space a little bit and kind of enjoying this. And I can stop when I feel like I'm ready to stop. I'm just kind of going around and maybe I'll go come back with some white layers later. I don't know, we'll see. There it is. That 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 was fun too. So this will never get wrinkled. It will always stay um, flat. And you could you what could you use this for? Well, it is mineral paper. It can be used for a few things. Um, I think I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I like to scan this paper and make this into something too. And then you can have a paper that you can fold if you wanted to do some origami. Now I'm gonna try a little lifting, something that is gonna be a little fun. We'll see if it will work. I'm gonna wet this area and I'm just gonna see if I can lift it. I'm gonna maybe wet a few little pieces here just for fun, see what, what happens with this ink on the six, on the uh, mineral paper. I'm just gonna see if I can pick up some of that color. And yes, I can which is another fun thing, because when you're making marks, you can also take away things. And that's another very, very calming and very therapeutic thing to do is to kind of, you kind of remove marks and see what happens. So here, I'm gonna just do that. See what I'm getting, I'm lifting that. And I really like this now. I could come back and take my washi paper and create marks with that. If I wanted to, I can use this as my printing press, if that makes sense. Like, let's say I want to make, oh, I'm going to find another piece of paper. Um, oh, here, on the one that I had earlier, it started with the, when I was doing the ink stick, um, I can make some marks here and do some mono printing kind of with this. I'm just going to try something. Never done this before. There's nothing's going to, it's not going to hurt just what I'm doing. I'm creating, who knows what I'm doing here. <laughs> This is where I'm just having fun. I'm going to spray this with water just to see, reconstituting it with water. I've never done this, but I'm thinking it's this is going to be fun. I hope it's going to recon. I'm just spritzing it with some water and let's just see what happens. Let's see if we can make a monoprint. 
right? Something that I try. So right here with you, because I feel I, I, it is, it's just like, let's just see what we can get. So if you don't have a jelly plate, you can make mono, oh, hello. That is beautiful. <laughs> I love that. So, and now we have an idea. You could make, and like, look at that, with the with lifting the color, what happened with that? So I'm gonna try to do one more print from that. Let me just see if I can get a print out of it, spraying it, nice, let it sit for a sec. And I'm gonna grab another sheet of 6H, which is really the, that's this one. And I'm gonna, I'm, I can't believe I'm using my mineral paper as a monoprint, monoprinting plate with sumi ink. So that's, it's definitely, I'm gonna give it another spritz. Let's see if I can really get that to really do its thing. So I'm gonna grab, oh yeah, I think it will. And another thing I'll try, if you haven't gotten one of these, I think you should suggest, bye Denise, nice to see you. We're almost, <laughs> good to see you. Okay, if you haven't gotten one of these, it's our Baron, you might wanna get one because it's, which I'm a little nervous about this, I don't wanna scrape, I don't want to uh, tear the paper. And that's what's great about this paper or these things. They don't really tear the paper. Well, let's just see what we get. Let's just see if we got a print. So we got another ghosty print. It's, it's subtle. It's not as cool as the first one, but I could keep adding more, uh, you know, inks and things. But I really like this, the way this looks now, even more than I liked it before. And I, I think this is the time where I'll, you know, would add after it's dry, maybe add some white ink or something. and. So that is, um, that's it now, that's it on the ink. Um, if you're interested in me doing a fold, I have some paper that I have done. I've actually gonna sit, sit this aside and I, I got this paper that I turned, you know, I remember I printed out the paper, the uh, little marked paper that I made five years ago and I've got lots of ink on my hands. So I need to wipe that off before I do anything. This is a traditional fold, it's very easy. And it would be fun if you're like thinking of Halloween trees. I'm gonna wipe my hands off a little bit more. If you're thinking of Halloween treats or uh, like if you wanna just, instead of giving candy away, put little folded treats or I don't know, just something out there that maybe that don't cause cavities or hyperactivity, I guess. If people even get trick-or-treaters anymore, I don't. Once in a while we get maybe one. Um, all right, so I'm, as long as my area is dry, I'm going to show you this really cool fold. And you can use any kind of paper you have or some paper you've already made your marks on. So there we go. All right. Any of the ladies on Folded Fridays, get your papers out. <laughs> so what you're going to do is you're going to keep your paper on the table. I mean, face down, pattern side down. And you're going to fold it in half in two directions. White sides together, like this. And then you're going to open it up. So you've got four sections. You're going to fold all four set, uh, corners to that center intersection, like that. This is a traditional offering box. It's uh, been around for many, 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 many years. And uh, it's really, Nice to put little treats in. And these colors are so October, so, so, so definitely October. Okay, now I'm gonna take this and you notice I have a folded these little flaps, turn it over so the solid side is facing you, facing up, and then just fold it up in half, just fold it corner to corner like this. Okay, now you're gonna take the, we have these two corners and you're gonna just take it and fold it in half this way, but you're really gonna collapse. You're putting your finger in between this little square and you'll notice you're gonna just take that and you're gonna open this up and flatten it. So I'm just gonna flatten that right on top of itself. There's other ways to do this that are a little neater, I'm sure. But basically I just created a square on top of the, tri of basically here's what you, you start with this, you bring it up and then flatten it down. And we're going to turn it over and do the same thing on the other, other side. Um, another way to do it is if I think you could, another way is if you folded it this way and then folded it up 
I think you can probably open it, the flap. Yeah, that would work better. You can open this, get that, your finger into the center part here and flat, and open that flap up and flat it into a square like this. There. So you want your full, all your points to be all in one direction like this. This kind of looks like the crane, sort of, but it's a little inside out. So next thing is you're going to take the, I think I remember how to do this. <laughs> Sometimes I forget. Okay, so you're gonna take this and you're gonna open the insides out with your finger, just open this up like this. And then you're gonna fold with the point. These points are gonna be up. I think I did that. Yeah, you're gonna, there's only one way it will do it. You, you open this up and it will just kind of fold flat and flatten that down. So you'll see this little kind of a rectangle with, and then open this up. Same way, just take your fingers, Take those in the middle or in that opening and open those up. You can use a, you have a folding tool that's helpful. And you're just going to flatten that, fold that and flatten it into a kind of a long rectangle. And now you have this, looks like a little rabbit ear things. And I'm just going to fold these little pieces, fold each one so that it's backwards. So that it looks like a house now or a tent. Reminds me of a, like a camping tent. And you're gonna take, now we have these solid edges and you're gonna take these and you're gonna fold these uh, to the center, like a cupboard fold to the center on both sides. And you'll see, I just made that cupboard fold to the center, turn it over and do the same on the other side. And your box is finished, it's folded. You just need to um, open it up. So there it is. I'm gonna take the top flap, fold it all the way down as far as it will go. And take the other flap, fold that as far as it will go. And now you open it up and you press, take your fingers and form that kind of rounded, feels like a little bowl or something. You just push the little, um, push them all out on the, all the sides. And now you have a little treat box made out of your own paper, which I just think these are so fun. You can have them with solid legs or um, you can fold the legs in, but I like these solid legs with this paper, because it shows all the paper off. So there it is. <laughs> Hope you had fun today. Anything, anyone have any more questions or anything? Phoebe? I think you got everybody's <laughs> questions. Yeah, no, I think you um, answered everybody. I hope I didn't miss anything. Um, but yeah, I don't see any new questions coming in. I think everybody got a lot of really good ideas from today's live. Um, everything is so cute. Oh my gosh. Love that. That, one's fun. <laughs> that one's really cool. Something new. And then I'll bring in the other ones just as now, now that they're dry, they really look, they look so different now. So let me just kind of bring these in. Even the one, this one's not dry yet, but is it, is it's drying more details coming out than what was there before? Same with this is a little monoprint based on this one. And I love these. I think these are like Really abstract fun. And then <clears throat> this is the Cordinoco with the circles. And I love in this one, it's all dry now. And I love the dark that kind of meanders through the light. And I love the brayer little landscapes. And this one kind of looks like a little bat. <laughs> These look like little bats now. <laughs> so if you turn them one way, it looks like one thing. The other way, it looks like another. Um, so there is our little mark making adventure today. And if you do this with black, you can do this with colors. Like I want to mention that last few weeks ago, I did little swatches with the bonsai colors. If you remember these, I made all these swatches. And then as a mindful activity, I'm going to find it, um, I made these little marks like this and marks like that. So really, it just keeps going. You can just get into this whole thing. <laughs> and and just make layers and patterns and, and some things you'll come back to and you'll think, oh, I could use this for this project, you know, or use it for that project. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed today's uh, demo and uh, I hope it inspires you to play with our inks and to try grinding your own ink and get a Sazuri stone if you haven't already. And a one inch brayer, I think this is the one inch speed of all. What a fun, it's gonna be my new fun thing to do. 
<laughs> and Wanda's here. Hi, Wanda. <laughs> Glad you're here. I love it. Well, thank you. Yeah, we got a lot of people, a lot of familiar names, and I think a few new ones. So it's always nice to see our group growing and get more people interested. Um, but thank you so much, Karen. This was amazing. And well, I hope you had fun for joining. I sure did. <laughs> I'll, keep, yeah. I'll keep doing this. But anyone who'd like to, if you've um, done some of this, post, you know, just let us put it out. If we have a Facebook group or any, just post your, your creations. And we'd love to see them. Um, you know, anything that inspired you today, just kind of let us know because it's something that, you know, we, we like to know. We like feedback too. And you know, anything you'd like to see, um, if you want to, I know next week we're going to have a, um, a live, Phoebe will talk about it. It's not our normal yeah. scheduled thing, but next week on yeah. Friday. Um, so a week from today, we're actually going to be doing something a little bit different with another artist who we, uh, we know and we love. Her name is Danny Wilson. So we're actually going to be going live with her on Instagram. Um, so you can join us over there on our Yasutomo Instagram page. Same time, same day, just next week, different place. And um, Danny Wilson will be showing us what she likes to do on mineral paper using our gouache. So that's going to be a really cool demo. And she's got a, her very own style and she's a self-taught. So she comes with her own techniques all the time. So it's going to be a really good one. I hope oh, you can join us over fun. there. That, yeah. Got to tune in for that. Um, then, so please today, again, um, please write down in the comments the things you'd like to see uh, us go do in two weeks. So we have another live in a couple of weeks. And I don't know if we planned it yet, Phoebe. I forgot if we did or <laughs> if we- well, You know, we have a, a few ideas floating around, but we didn't nail anything down. Okay, good. So yeah. we'll just see what happens. Um, hopefully, you know, with the comment, um, it would be fun to see what y'all would like to see. So I hope you have a good weekend and safe and happy Halloween next week. I'm getting my flu shot. And- uh, <laughs> So I'll have stay a, healthy yeah uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah all right <clears throat> but really thank you for coming everyone all right thank you everyone and thank you so much karen have a safe and happy and creative weekend yeah oh, take care everybody. before we sign off virginia threw out an idea painting your leaves with a leaf emoji Ah, love it. We can have a leaf painting session, which would have been nice today, wouldn't it? But you know what we could do is next for the leaf painting, like it could be similar to very, you know, just relaxing and using our watercolors. I think that'd be fun. So yeah, good idea. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Virginia, for the idea. Love that. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, and have All a good right. weekend. We'll see you next Take time. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.